Hey, this is Evan Sutton, and I'm here from Dubspot, New York, and today we're going to talk about Contact. All of the music that you just heard was made from one sample, and we're going to use that today to make one of the sounds. Now, Contact comes with a great library of sampled and multi-sampled instruments, but one thing I think is really interesting to explore are techniques of sampling more irregular waveforms and sounds. So, to start out, I'm going to bring up a new instance of Contact. Okay, so now that we have our contact multi-rack open, I'm going to go to Files and click New Instrument, and this is going to bring up a new instrument in our rack. Now, we have the name of the instrument, we have our output channels, this is Stereo 1, Contacts, multi-rack has an internal mixer for when you have more than one instrument in the rack. The same goes for the MIDI channel, I'm going to switch this to Omni so that it is going to pay attention to all MIDI channels. Then you can also tune the instrument, you can pan it and change the volume, as well as solo and mute it. So to go under the hood of this thing, I'm going to click on the wrench. We have our source area here. We can turn keyboard tracking on and off. Uh, we can reverse our sample, and we can also tune. We can insert effects. We also have volume and panning. Uh, we have more insert and send effects, and then our modulation sources are down below. Now, in order to get a sample mapped to the keyboard, we have to go to the mapping editor. Now, the sample that I chose to use is of a nondescript politician, and I got this sample from freesound.org. I've pitch shifted him down a couple of octaves to uh, keep him in the witness protection program, so let's take a listen. People don't want to stand. People out there listening know what I believe, and that's how best it is to keep the peace. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this sample, and I'm going to drag it onto the keyboard here. Now, what you're going to see when I hit various MIDI notes is a red tab. And this red tab is representing horizontally our pitch on our keyboard and vertically velocity. Now, what you can do is you can have separate samples for different keys and also for different velocities over the same keys. But what we're going to do today is just stretch this one sample over the entire range of the keyboard. Let's listen to what happens when I hit C1. Now clearly, the playback pitch is way too high, so how do we compensate for this? Well, we go to our root setting here. Right now, Contact thinks that the original key of our sample was C negative 2. Now that's really, really low, so what's happening is when we get up to a place like C1, it's overcompensating and we have a sample that's way too high. So I'm going to push this up to C1. And now when I hit C1, it'll play back at the original pitch. Okay, so now that we have our pitches worked out a little bit, let's see what happens when I play a couple of notes that are a few octaves apart. So the problem here is that contact is still linking pitch and timing of the sample. How do we remedy this? Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go down here to Source and we're going to choose Time Machine. So what the Time Machine is going to let us do is it's going to let us break the link between playback speed and tuning. So we have our master tuning knob here, we have our master playback speed, and then a couple of more advanced controls. Now as far as real-time pitch shifting is concerned, it's going to sound better when the sound is broken up into smaller pieces. This grain knob is going to let us dictate that size. Let's see what happens when we play two notes that are a couple of octaves apart. So what the smoothing knob is going to do is it's going to put a little window or an envelope around each of these grains so that we don't get so much of an edge around them. Take a listen without it. People know where I stand and with it. People know where I stand. So it's going to sound a little better and more musical. All right, now that we've got the sample mapped to the keyboard properly, let's go ahead and find a place that's going to give us some nice harmonic material for a musical note. We're going to go to the Wave Editor, and also we can close the Mapping Editor by just clicking on its name here. All right, the Wave Editor is going to show us our sample in its entirety. It's showing us where it's playing back at any given time we can create what's called a sample loop. To open a new loop, you just click on a number. You can move the loop start and loop end markers 
just by clicking and dragging in this window here. So there are a few loop modes. Right now we have until end set. That means that, this, that when we hit a note, the sample is gonna start at the beginning and then it's gonna sit in the loop window until we release the note. People know, people know. So that's pretty good, but I wanna get rid of the beginning. So I'm gonna move this to a nice place. All right, so now we're getting something that's vaguely resembling a musical note. Now I'm gonna go back to the time machine and instead of using the loop in its more traditional way, I'm gonna turn the speed on the time machine all the way down to zero. What this is gonna do is it's gonna create a different type of loop at the start marker on the wave editor that's about six milliseconds in length or whatever the grain knob is dictating at the time. And we can hear it with a larger grain size. So I'm gonna put it back to six. So now we've got a sound that's got some nice harmonic content. It's sounding musical. Let's add a little bit of movement to the sound. I'm gonna go ahead under group insert effects. I'm gonna add a two pole low pass filter. These filters have a really nice sound. And whenever you add an effect, you can add a modulator. For this low pass filter, I'm gonna to go to envelopes and I'm gonna choose AHDSR. So I want this envelope modulating the cutoff frequency of the filter I've chosen here. We can see the envelope down here, it says cutoff. What we can do here is we can bias the amount of modulation. And I'm going to tune the cutoff frequency here to put it in a, in a more appropriate place. Maybe turn up the attack just a touch. I'm going to get rid of the wave editor here because we don't need it anymore. So that's sounding kind of nice. But what about sustained notes? It's going to start to sound a little bit monotonous when we just hold down notes because there's no movement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the source and I'm going to add a modulator. Now it's already got the pitch bend on my MIDI keyboard mapped to the pitch of the source, but I'm going to add another one and I'm going to choose LFOs and I'm going to choose a triangle and I'm also going to have that map to pitch bend. I'm going to turn the bias way down so it's a little bit subtle. So now that I've got this modulation set up, I can go down here and I can view my settings on the LFO. I've got frequency, I've got fade in, which is basically like an attack segment on an envelope, and I've got phase. I can move where the LFO starts and ends. So for my purposes, that's a little much. We're gonna turn the range down just a little more. And I'm gonna turn up the fade in so that you're only gonna hear this modulation on sustained notes. Let's hear it with a chord. And that's just going to add some nice subtle movement to our sound that's going to make it a little bit more musical and a little bit more acoustically pleasing. Now I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to add a second modulator to our low pass filter and I'm going to choose external sources and I'm going to choose key position. Now what this is going to do is it's going to track the keyboard and it's going to move the cutoff frequency of our low pass filter accordingly. I'm going to bias this down so it's very subtle. And what this is going to ensure is that no two notes have the exact same cutoff frequency. It's going to make the it's gonna make the instrument sound a little bit more natural and a little bit more acoustically viable. Not bad. We could even drop the bias of this a little bit. And 
and move the cutoff frequency up here. All right, now that we've got a few modulations in place that are giving us some movement in our sound, there's one last thing to do. I'm going to close up our instrument options by clicking on the wrench here, and I'm going to open up my browser, and I'm going to bring in one of my acoustic piano modules. Now this is just one of Native Instruments' acoustic piano instruments, and I'm going to set it to Omni for its MIDI channel. So what's going to happen is, when I play a note, since both of these instruments in my multi-rack are set to Omni, it's going to play the same note simultaneously on both of them. What you're hearing is that I am a little bit out of tune with our new instrument. So, what we're going to do is we're going to tune it. The tuning knob on the outside of our instrument here is only going to give us musical semitones. So what I have to do now is go under the hood again by clicking the wrench. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the mapping editor because it's going to let us fine tune the note. And we'll leave it just slightly out of tune so we get some nice chorusing effects with the other instruments. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this piano module. I'm going to click the Browse folder to get rid of the browser. And now that we have our instrument, I'm going to add a few bus effects here, some echo and some reverb, and a little bit of EQ. And now let's hear what it's like with our sequence. All of the instruments in this sequence were made from the same vocal sample that we were just manipulating, some of them in contact and some of them in battery. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on working with samples in contact. This is Evan Sutton. You can catch me at suttonevan.com. I'll also be handling the sampling duties for DubSpot's online sound design and synthesis course, co-developed by the one and only Heinrichs Vellen. Be excellent to each other. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.